I mean, you, you hear negative all the time. People, it seems like they want to bring up the past. They want to bring up the things that happened 10, 15, 20, even 30 years ago. I think if you were to go out and pull the average county citizen, you might get a, a blank stare or, or a negative reaction in most cases. People might think that, you know, it's, it's a community of uneducated, poor people that couldn't get out and didn't have opportunities. That's just not true. And what I heard when I first arrived is, you don't know what it was like in the 70s where everybody could get a job and if you, if you lost a job, you got another one the next day and then all of a sudden that was gone. So a couple of my orthodontist friends, first thing they said to me was, well, you're gonna move out of there now, aren't you? I think you can readily get the feeling that it's a stagnated community going downhill, spiraling downhill, but, I, but it's certainly not the case. You know, I was actually born here in 1942, so I've never really gotten away from living here. But growing up in the 50s, everyone was close. It was a close-knit group, and you felt a sense of community, a sense of home, a sense of connection. It was, it was just a neat place to live. I met my wife at a, actually a dance here in Galleon, and uh, we dated, and uh, one, after I graduated, we got married, and. We've been married 59 years. Actually, I'll be married 60 years this year. That seems like a long, long time. I actually graduated from high school in 1960, got married later in 1960, and started my first job at Columbia Gas in 1960, where I worked for 40 years. So uh, back in 1960, when I graduated, you could go to work anywhere. General Motors was booming, uh, Pittsburgh Plate Glass, General Electric, the Galleon Ironworks, North Electric. Getting a job was not a problem. And to tell you the truth, I went to Columbia Gas and I got hired in November 1960 and I went to work for $1.95 an hour and I thought I was living large. So uh, it was just a great time to be living here and looking for a job. What it really was in our day is if your dad worked at the Galleon Ironworks, you always had that mindset you're going to work at the Galleon Iron Ironworks and retire from there. And now as I look back, all of those places are gone. All, the, all of them are closed. They've been, a lot of them been bought up by corporations and to see General Motors leave the Mansfield, Ontario area a few years ago is just unbelievable. <laughs> it almost looks like a monument when you go by there anymore. So Th those are scary times when things like that happen. I think it was a slow transition. I mean, you saw some of those places begin to close, and then you saw things like the J.C. Penney store close up, the Sears store close up. There was a time Galleon had five or six supermarkets, and then just slowly but surely, they were family-owned too, local people, and they just couldn't compete with the bigger box stores and things like that. So it was slow, but and it was scary to some people, and it seemed like people had to go farther away to find a decent job. And eventually some of those people just left the area. So th th those were probably the dreariest days. 04 was probably the worst of all because it was like there was a cloud over the community. I came at the end of the largest economic downturn. And when I arrived, things were very depressed, not only in terms of the economic condition, but in terms of the morale for people in the county. And so it's been a real adventure watching people pull up their bootstraps and come back together. We had a couple of situations where we had families who had to leave, uh, who were so 
uh, intimately involved in the life of the church that there were a few people who came along to me at that time and said, I don't think the church is gonna survive if we lose these people. Not only how we rallied around to get it formed as a, as a group of individuals, but it's also how we listen to everyone in the community. The strategic and visioning planning process was reaching out into the community. It was a bottom-up approach, not a top-down approach. Nobody sat, sat around and said, oh, we need to create an economic development partnership or a community development partnership. It became an initiative. There had been a community meeting uh, prior to the forming of the partnership, and it kind of led to the forming of the partnership. And it really opened the eyes of some of the, the leaders, elected and otherwise. And some of those things had to do with certainly our median income, uh, our, um, we were near the bottom in terms of educational attainment. Uh, by the bottom, I'm talking about one of the, the lowest educational attainment in the state. Very much in with southeastern Ohio and the Appalachian counties. And that was really the impetus for them to begin having conversations and then uh, those that had an opportunity and the knowledge of how to access others began to look and, and benchmark what other communities were doing. And from that then they decided to form a nonprofit corporation um, that would have support from across the county that could lead the, rest of the county into uh, the issues that come with community and economic development. Dave Williamson had asked me to join the Vision Committee wasn't sure what I was getting into, went to the first meeting, but I saw the purpose pretty quickly. And through those meetings, Dave hinted at the fact that he needed some help in economic development. And my mindset is I love getting in on the ground floor and trying to build a vision. And so I said to him, I'd be interested in, in joining you. This area has the genetics formula for success, but it's a matter of getting everyone aligned, getting that collaborative impact moving. So I get to be a part of that, and that's what's exciting and fun. So I was recruited uh, to come back and help open the Success Center, which is a satellite branch of North Central State College. So Crawford County hadn't had a higher educational institution in its history ever. And then through that process, I was introduced to the Crawford Partnership. I was introduced to, to the work uh, of Dave Williamson um, at that point, as well as Gary Frankhaus and, and the board of directors that really started saying, listen, educational attainment is imperative to economic development. We have to have a place to train and educate, support and guide our county. We can't keep sitting at this 11% educational attainment rate when the state average is 44. We've got to do something and um, the partnership was really one of those, you know, put your money where your mouth is kind of organizations. They were like, no, we're, we're not gonna talk about it. We're gonna, we're gonna take action. And improving the livelihood of families and businesses in Crawford County is the mission of the partnership. And that's all I ever wanted to do. And what a wonderful name, Success Center. And, and there is nothing more exciting to me than walking into that center and seeing, um, all walks of life using that center. It's a success center. It's a center of excellence. You have people doing, taking their GED. Uh, you have people that are taking classes through North Central State College. And so you've created this spectrum that somebody can actually uh, sit there and get their GED. They didn't, they didn't have any hope. And you can watch them in the time frame that they're in that center change right before your eyes. They have hope. They can see themselves as successful. And if they're successful, that means the community is successful. We just told the um, local leaders that came together, just you know, speak from your heart. And they admitted the problems that, they are, that we've talked about, you know, that our county has, that, and, and what we're doing about them. And uh, when the meeting was concluded, the consultant said, if I were a company and I heard your story and the problems that you have, and what you're doing about it, I would love to come to this community. And I really believe there's an awful lot to that. As an individual, if you've had a storied past, if you had, had a past that you're not really proud of, people will know. And if you're applying for a job, your best bet is to admit where you've been and talk about how your life is different than it was, what you're doing about it. 
The Crawford Partnership, I think, is a key piece of our ability to move forward in the county. Um, I, I like to think about it as like who else would do the role of, of really waking up every morning thinking about how can we push Crawford County forward and believe me there's a lot of counties and areas around the state and nation they are thinking about it and there's been some really neat initiatives that have happened and I know that without that facilitating and being there and, and I just look at the partnership as a facilitator uh, to spark discussion and then kind of lead a grassroots effort of people moving Crawford forward and, and I know that's not going to happen without the partnership being there. Something that I think it needs to be constantly considered is the fact that if you aren't doing a damn good job taking care of your existing businesses, then how are you, how are you gonna claim that you can attract new businesses? And our local businesses for years have not been able to attract the labor that they need. We built relationships with the employers that we have on hand. But I really think it's very important that the community have representation to those employers and constantly tell them, we really appreciate what you're doing. How can we help you? At first it was really, it was really overwhelming, but you take one look at our board of directors and the leadership that Gary um, uh, exudes every day and the passion that he has, as well as, you know, the blueprints that Dave Williamson and, and that group 10 years ago helped lay out. There have been other strategic plans developed in closed rooms and then presented to the public and said, here's your plan that we developed for you, now go do it. And they always sit on the shelf, always. This one's alive because you wrote it. And if you wrote it, we knew you would underwrite it. And that's what's happened, you know, it's, it's, it's your heart that put this together. And then you charged us with that work. Now go do it and report back to us. And that's what the partnership's been doing in the, in the 10 years that it's been there. Anytime I'm feeling a little overwhelmed, I take a beat and I, I go back and I look at that 2020 plan and I say, okay, we've really done a lot of really great things. So our values are to listen, then learn, and then lead efforts and in that order is so important. The way that we solve the problems of today is, is start with the end of mind. Mm -hmm. We've got to believe that's attainable. When I coach, I always talk about thought precedes action. So we've got to think about things. Um, we've got to come up with some wild ideas. And then we've got to, first things first, start planning them out. You know, how do we accomplish those things? Best thing we ever did was the Crawford 2020 vision because it started to take where we were and, and move us in a direction of what we could achieve, and we've seen those successes. It's, it's not just saying, I expect you to do better. It's more of the matter of, we're gonna help you achieve more than that your dad and I could do. Now, we're gonna get you there. We're gonna help you get there. To be able to offer that support and realize there's community support to get that done. That's happening. There's a lot of kids that love living here and want to be here, so it's our job to make sure that they stay and that they want to stay. So now we have this generation that's coming up that if we're not careful, we won't harness that energy and they are going to go somewhere else where people are accepting of the way in which they'd like to work and the things that they'd like to do. The saying that I love is you hear it, you forget it. And in school, you hear all about it. You see it, you recall it, you do it, you know it. So the first step we took was what we call wage tours. And that's where the opportunity for high school kids to be able to visit companies while they're still in high school to be able to see the opportunities that are jobs they had no idea existed right at home that they could be excited about uh, and then still have time to do something about it and to help them be motivated in their, in their education and to be inspired. Uh, so I think aspiration is really important for young people, but you have to conceive it before you can achieve it. The Crawford Partnership has uh, done many things for our community and, and I will speak in, in particular with Galleon City Schools. 
The Crawford Partnership has uh, worked with the school systems, worked with our local businesses to provide example wage tours. And today we are actually uh, taking many of our students, our whole freshman class, on what we're calling wage tours. Wage tours are phenomenal. Um, it's great for our students to be able to get out and see what kind of opportunities are in their own backyard. Um, even if they never decide to pursue a career with us, we appreciate the opportunity to be able to share our story. Seen a lot of good things come from the partnership. I think one of the best things is the Crawford Success Center. I'm really excited about that, that people can get a further their education right here in Crawford County without having to leave the community. And I think the, the brightest part of the whole thing is that the, the things that are pulling us forward are addressing the things that are holding us back. And that was encouraging because we were working together as a county. I think we all saw the need. We still had individual needs in our communities, but it was good to work together and realize we're all kind of in the same boat and if we don't pull together, we're not gonna get out of it, so. The thing that I'm most passionate about right now um, that we've launched is our Community Opportunity website. It is a game changer for our county. It impacts and touches everything from workforce to education, to our business community, to job seekers, to tourism, to branding of our county. I mean, it touches on everything. And um, there's no silver bullet to what we do, but this is something that we've created and nurtured and, and brought to our community to help address some of these. Issues. But we want to focus on careers. Um, you know, a living wage is fourteen fifty-five an hour, uh, and at this point, you're not getting paid that. And we want families to be here because families make the core of communities. Uh, another program that I'm really proud of in the county is our C Lead program. It's our community leadership development program, and it is an experiential program that engages community leaders of all levels um, to really get out and use Crawford County as their classroom. So we, at this point, have had almost 200 graduates that, that spend their time throughout a one-year period exploring the people and the places that make Crawford County so wonderful um, and really developing a passionate network of local leaders. These are the leaders that are going to fill your boards. These are the leaders that are going to take on projects. These are the people that we're going to connect with when we want to get something done. It's because I had the uh, opportunity to participate in one of the, the Crawford partnership programs called See You Lead. It shows you the uh, positives of the county as well as the negatives. It shows you the industries that are available, the uh, schooling that's available, and along with that it helps you uh, create some initiatives that help solve some of the deficiencies as well as promote some of the positives. The big thing that I see that we can do differently is, is to work together. Big change requires a lot of people. Everyone needs to understand that the, the more that you work together, the more we can collectively get done. You can really change the world if you don't care who gets the credit. Especially in sports, you always had your rivals. So whether it would be Shelby or be Cyrus or, or whoever, I think you're ingrained at that point that these people are always your rivals and at times you don't, you don't necessarily want to have to work with them. But I think that needs to change as, as adults and as a, a community and a county, we need to learn how to work better together to solve some of the community issues. So by no means do we want any of our communities to lose their identity, the New Washington, the Crestline, the Galleon, the Bucyruses. However, we know that when we all work together, that collective impact, when we're all rowing the same direction, bigger and better things can happen and the rising tide lifts all those ships. And I think the best example is where we've seen other businesses in, in communities within Crawford County have come over and, and been resources in different communities than they were initially founded in. And I think that's a real testament to that collaboration, that trust that's developing. And then what happens is, is that local effort expands to a regional effort and we come bigger and better. What I, I think I've noticed is that because we are trained from such a young age to root for the home team, um, that, that we always have respected the fact that if you have a, a Crestline, you know, Letterman's jacket on and you're proud of that community and school, that's awesome. We want that. We want you to have pride. We want you to be a proud Winford Royal. We want you to love Bucyrus and, and think the Bucyrus downtown is better than any other downtown. We want the Galleon Tigers to, to win state titles, you know? 
we think that the Colonel Crawford softball program is outstanding and bar none the best in the region. Those are the kind of things that are so important from an identity standpoint. And I think that a lot of times people misunderstand when we say we have to think countywide. We don't mean you you can't be proud of where you're from. We just want you to understand that if we're competing with the state, that we are all on the same team. That you can have that local individualized pride, but still understand that some of the things that we've got to do have got to be a countywide effort. I think it's important to have the Crawford Partnership in our county because they can bring us all together. It's again, just like Community Opportunity, one place from an economic development and a community development standpoint that the state and the local communities can work together. The work that they do benefits everybody. So I think it's really important that we leverage the opportunities that they have been working on and we can use our volunteerism plus the connections that they have to make this a stronger place. Positive growth in Bucyrus is positive growth in Galleon. That's, that's how I feel and I, and I know that a lot of people around me are, are in, in that same mindset. It started with the Success Center in North Central State and OSU Mansfield and and uh, I think, you know, we're a manufacturing community and we embrace who we are. And those, those employers needed the educators to hear them on what kind of education and training they needed for their workforce. And so OSU and NC State, and they're all working together now to create those pathways, not only for the individuals, the worker, you know, but for the communities and the employers and businesses. So it's just really an exciting time. The Crawford Partnership creates a mechanism where we can bring our ideas together and the businesses can coordinate and work together and as opposed to being standalone on our own. So it's a great uh, element for our community. I, I think there's a lot of potential for a lot more collaboration between the communities than there's ever been. I think the partnership has brought that out. I know in 2013, when we uh, partnered with the Crestline uh, Chamber of Commerce to become one chamber of the Gallian Crestline Area Chamber of Commerce, it was difficult at first, and it was I think it was a hard sell over there, but we've seen them uh, come on board and a lot of their businesses and, and people get involved with the chamber and there's some great things happening over there some great things to make try to make the community close to what it used to be and I think it's encouraging people I think it's encouraging young people and, and that spreads to a guy and of Cyrus too and I, I think the partnership is the biggest part of that because it's taught us to work together and quality of life is what draws industry to areas these days. Um, you're seeing that a lot of industry now chase people, where it used to be that people would chase industry. Uh, that's, that's changing. I, I think it's a quality of life issue. The more things they have that they can do here, uh, the more likely they are to stay. What's always amazed me, you see a lot of people coming back after they leave for six, seven, eight, nine, ten years because they realize the importance of a small community. I mean, here, our motto a few years ago was big town close, small town friendly. And that's exactly what we were. We were close enough to all the amenities, the Clevelands, the Columbuses, and we could, could come right back home and live in a nice, safe, affordable environment. Through the 2020 process, you know, over 600 people gathered. They talked about how we would change our community in the next 20 years uh, and written in the quality of life. Uh, as an as a accomplishment by 2020 was to build an indoor sports complex along US 30 because of its logistics uh, and ease of getting in and out uh, so that we could bring people to the area. Yeah, think about what it takes to create a center in a small community like Crawford County. You had to have everybody at the table. And without the partnership leading that effort, that wouldn't have happened. You had business at the table, you had government at the table, you had uh, nonprofits at the table, you had individuals at the table. And this is one that has taken a long time because there are so many things that go into the studies to acquire property, uh, to raise the financing. 
but it's easy to do when, when the end goal is, you know you're gonna bring about 25,000 people to an area, you're gonna fill hotel rooms 26 out of 52 weeks a year, the, the money is anticipated on average in the first five years of $1.9 million of economic impact per year. I mean, that's huge for this area. And I can tell you from an economic development standpoint, people are always saying, you know, why don't you bring this or why don't you bring that? Well, when I talk to those people in those industries, they know the, the rooftop counts. They know the amount of people that are in this area. And that's a game changer, because when I say, yeah, we're 41,000, but you can add 25,000 to that because we have this industry that we're focused on. Downtown revitalization, it's gotta happen. People want to shop locally. People want to spend their money locally. So we need to make sure that we're making our communities um, a destination for people to choose to come and spend time in. There's a lot of downtowns that are the future for retail. I think you're gonna see the future retail changing with the Amazons, the delivery services that really are only within a three to five year time frame away from being to your house in an hour. So people will shop less for commodity items, but they're still gonna shop. And that's the important thing. They're gonna shop for entertainment, for socialization. And I think if we as rural communities, Village of Crestline, Galleon, Bucyrus, can develop our downtowns where it becomes a social hub, there's real opportunity because retail will chase that. We just need to put our focus there. And with the strategy, with the end in mind, I think there's a lot of opportunities for downtowns and, and for bringing people to rural communities. So something I'm really passionate about as well is utilization of the Sandusky River. It's imperative we have this beautiful resource that flows right through the middle of our county um, that we need to start utilizing it for recreational purposes. We need to create trails and paths for people to walk, bike, run, explore, hike on. Um, we need to do things that will get people outside and get people moving and really improve the quality of life for those in our county. And I think this area is primed for that because we have the US 30 widening that happened just 10 years ago. And some would say that's a long time, but not in our world. Um, and you'll see it because, I mean, there's four new interchanges just within Crawford County. And what that does is it creates new greenfield spaces, it creates new commercial development spaces. Uh, so we've got we've to get that message out. There's a lot of things that, that I, we're so excited to tackle in the next 10 years. We have no lack or shortage of initiatives or projects or ways to make our mark and ways to improve the livelihood of the community. So the next 10 years are going to be really amazing. We still want it to be the place that everybody values. You know, it's, it's, it is a hometown. It's where you, your kids can jump on their bike and ride down the street and go to the park and go to the ice cream store. We don't want to lose that. Uh, but I also believe that when we get back to where we were, we lower the cost for all of us. Obviously, I'm, in, I'm excited about the changes that have taken place uh, in, in what is now my home county. And the direction that it's headed is a whole lot different than it was before. And so what I would love to see everyone in the county It'd be part of the process, maybe not actively, but you know, from the heart, maybe from the pocketbook at times, to be able to participate in that. The community parks improve. I've seen some of the county uh, nature centers improve. Uh, we've seen uh, some new businesses coming in, seen some housing um, developments put up for specific needs of the county. Now I think kind of comes the high times. Uh, you see, what we've got now is a lot of local industry, locally owned industry again, they're smaller. Uh, we have a school district where I think we're the only school uh, that offers a two-year associate degree in our high school without students having to leave our school district. They don't step off our campus and they can earn an associate degree here. I think it's important for all of us to be engaged because that's the only way we're going to tackle the magnitude of the challenges that are in front of us. And I think that's very positive and encouraging to see the various people in the community coming together. From our, from our standpoint as a business, we've never seen growth like we're seeing right now. And that's exciting. Uh, you know, it's as excited as I can be about my business I am now. The last decade of, of in, in, in Crawford County, I, I think, has been uh, monumental. There's more opportunity, there's more, uh, all, all of the existing businesses that are here seem to be really thriving, um, more so than what it was like uh, in the, you know, in 2010 was, you know, it was a recession. Uh, so there's, there's been a lot of positive growth. 
One of the things that uh, I'm encouraged about is we hear so many negative things in other communities and they do nothing about it. And in Crawford County, we're doing something about it through the wage program, through the Crawford Partnership. So there's a very positive feel in the community that we're tackling these problems head on. I don't want to hear that we can't do something because we're Crawford County. That excuse doesn't fly anymore. 10 years ago, people were sick of hearing that. They wrote the 2020 Envision Plan to change minds and to change culture, which doesn't happen overnight. But people were sick of saying we can't have things or we can't do things or accomplish things because of who we are and where we are. We're strategically located in the middle of everywhere. We're right on Route 30. We have phenomenal resources. And better yet, we have a community that cares and that is engaged and passionate and proud. So we have this recipe for success that is really unparalleled in our region. So I'm so thankful to be a part of the Crawford County community. I had an opportunity, many opportunities, to go other places. I've had people tell me, get out of Crawford County. And I've continued to stay because it is a great place to raise a family and to find community and to build together and to do that in the name of the Lord. We got to stop making excuses and stop saying it's somebody else's problem. All these issues that we talk about our county, say, well, he does this or he did. You start, you need to start looking in the mirror because we all own that. If you're local, if you've been here for any period of time, you own it too. And you've participated in it too. And if you're talking bad about your community to your friends, then you're as much to blame as those you're talking about. So stop it and start getting positive about your community. And that'll make a huge difference in your mind and your heart and in those people around you. I think the thing we need to remember, this is your home, this is my home, and we are Crawford County. So whether you're in New Washington, Bucyrus, Galleon, Crestline, or any of the surrounding townships, I am Crawford, and we are Crawford. And I am Crawford. 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 I am Crawford.